Hi, my name is Heather Richmond. In this video, I'm going to talk about quantum healing hypnosis technique and just sort of distill down some of the basics. Um, if you look on my website, there's quite a bit of information. Um, certainly, if you Google QHHT, you will find a bunch of information that is um, potentially a bit overwhelming. So I wanted to go ahead and just make this quick video to explain everything in a more succinct fashion, hopefully. And we'll talk about um, also what a session with me specifically will entail. Okay, so firstly, um, what is QHHT? Um, if you've made it this far. If you're, you know, even watching this video, you probably have heard me talk about it. And so you probably know that it does stand for quantum healing hypnosis technique. Um, and this is really the part of yourself that when you are able to move your ego aside, um, the ego is not the enemy, but sometimes the ego does need to be moved aside so that you can examine yourself on a deeper level. So once you can do that, once we can work together through hypnosis to do that, um, you can access what is called the superconscious, or maybe some people call it the oversoul or the higher so self. Um, some people just call it the soul. Whatever you choose to call it, essentially, it is um, the part of yourself that will lead you to um, the deepest understanding about what it is that you want in life, what it is that you truly are quote unquote meant to do. Um, now, it, the superconscious may not come right out and say, okay, your life purpose is to be a nurse or, you know, whatever, but um, it will give you enough because that's, you know, your own free will, but it will give you enough information for you to begin examining these things that you truly want in your, in your heart. Um, and you can integrate those things with, you know, your ego and the things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, who you are on a day-to-day -day basis and sort of marry those two things, the, the wants of the heart and the thoughts of the mind. And so you can find a balance of the two to sort of work together that ideally, <laughs> Um, that is a process. So there are two components of QHHT. Number one, if you look on most websites, um, particularly if you look on the official QHHT website, it will only discuss the guided past life regression, um, which is very helpful. Um, and traditionally, that's how um, it has been done. Um, QHHT was developed by a woman named Dolores Cannon. And um, for this has been about 45 years ago. She was a traditional hypnotherapist, and she sort of accidentally discovered QHHT and discovered, you know, she was with one of her, her clients, and um, this, this woman suddenly went into past lives. Um, and she, she, Dolores Cannon, just continued working with her client and um, found out that this, this woman had had, you know, many past lives and um, that she accessed the superconscious over various sessions. And she was able to talk about um, these things that I just discussed, her, you know, deepest desires and, and what her purpose was and all of that. And so, you know, upon discovering that, she was uh, intrigued, of course, and so she worked for Dolores Cannon worked for over um, f over forty years to perfect the process, and um, for the very most part, she guided people through their past lives. However, as she began to in the later years, she's pat she's passed now, but um, in her the later years that she was um, using this method on people and she became increasingly, you know, notable for this and published many books. Um, she began to notice that people weren't simply going into past lives only anymore. Um, there were some people 
that were, um, their super conscious wanted to show them perhaps life in another dimension. So this would probably be typically for people who were a bit more spiritual, um, and may have, um, you know, knowledge of meditation or astral travel or anything like that. But, you know, I'm, Certainly, it's a possibility that um, even if you have no experience with those things, that you might find yourself in another dimension. Who knows? Um, and um, also, it's a possibility that you can find either parallel lives, which is a little, um, that's probably one that's a bit more advanced as well, um, or a future life. And that one's probably more common. Um, so, you know, you might examine what your life will look like in the future. And if you want, um, you can observe, um, the day of your passing, the, the last day of your life. However, um, it, it may not, um, you will be just the observer and, um, you know, we will sort of go through this process and, um, together and I will, you know, certainly use professional judgment and you can guide yourself. The, the super conscious will not show you anything that is going to be, um, harmful to you. It will show you only things that are going to be helpful. So you're not going to see the, it won't show you the last day of your life if it's, you know, traumatic or like, uh, you know, you're, um, dying in some sort of very, uh, you know, terrible way. So, um, anyhow, so those are the two components. And like I said, you have some flexibility on whether, oh, excuse me, I did, I did not, um, explain the second part. So the second part is the direct superconscious access and questioning. So after you have examined these um, past lives or parallel lives or um, future lives, um, you then can access the superconscious directly. Um, I will speak to the subconscious and, or the, excuse me, the su superconscious um, and ask questions on your behalf. So, um, of note, it's very important to remember that, um, you are guiding this process. I'm only acting as the facilitator to help you figure out, um, these questions or answers to these questions. So you should first and foremost, prepare a list of questions that you want answered during the session. Um, a good range to shoot for is going to be 20 to 30. Um, you'll bring those in. Those can be questions about your life, your, you know, your current life, um, as it relates to your family, your career. It can be questions about your life purpose so that you can find a little bit of direction. Um, or it can be how, um, any of your relationships in your current life uh, may have manifested in any past lives. So, you know, you can potentially ask, um, you know, did I have a past life with my husband or, you know, whatever. Um, and you can find out, you know, if there's any sort of like karma that needs to be worked out or whatever the case may be. Okay. Um, Additionally, it is also possible for you to bring a list of physical health conditions that you want to find a better understanding about. Um, this can be, you know, any sort of malady that is expressed in the body as, um, you know, typically our, our bodies will send us, um, physical health conditions that, um, are a signal that something needs to be healed. And I don't mean just physically, um, it, it is related in some form or fashion to your mental and emotional health. So, um, you know, if you look on the QHHT website, you'll see, um, that Dolores Cannon was, um, you know, very interested in investigating this for, you know, providing sort of immediate healing during the process. Um, that is certainly a possibility. Um, but I think for me during the session, um, I will focus more on helping you to connect the emotional wounds, um, to, 
you know, sort of how those have manifested physically. And you are the one who can find healing through that, hopefully. All right. So during the session, um, when you arrive, you want to make sure that you are well rested. Um, no, please no partying the night before. Um, and you definitely want to avoid um, alcohol the night before and the morning of like if you have your cup of coffee every day certainly don't skip that because you don't want to you know have a caffeine withdrawal headache but like you don't want to just go overboard you know don't go out and get three or four red bulls or whatever um so you just want your both your mind and your body to be um truly you know open and prepared for the process um, and so as I, you know, mentioned here, most importantly, truly, you have got to have an open mind. Um, I'm a very firm believer in the idea that our thoughts create our reality. And as you, if you choose to, um, progress down a, um, a path of examining yourself, you will see that more and more. Um, and so, you know, if you come in and, you know, for whatever reason, you have it in the back of your mind, oh, this is not going to work for me. It won't. Your super conscious is aware of your doubts. And um, it's not to say you won't go into hypnosis. You may or you may not. But um, it, it will not provide you with as deep um, of insight, with deep, deeper insights about yourself um, that you could get if you had a truly open mind. So just be allowing as much as possible, you know, um, allow for the fact that anything <laughs> might happen. Um, it, it's best to sort of avoid any like preconceived notions. Okay. So during the actual session, first we will spend, and this is going to be in total, this entire process will likely be four to six hours. So, um, you know, it's, it's recommended that you don't really plan anything big during the day. Myself, I would recommend that you do not plan anything that is emotionally, um, taxing, um, later in the day, because this process is pretty, um, you know, it's pretty intense. So, um, you know, that's up to you, but that's my recommendation. Certainly not beforehand. <laughs> um, but I would recommend not, not after either. Just, just kind of plan on going home and, and relaxing and taking time to process all this. So the first part of your session for the first hour or two, um, we will just simply sit down and talk and I will hear anything you want to tell me. Um, I am, your captive audience at that point, and um, you can tell me, you know, anything that you're currently sort of concerned about. Tell me about your reasons for coming and investigating QHHT in the first place. Um, and then it is also very helpful, not that you have to give me names or specifics, but I do need to know, um, particularly if I'm going to be asking questions while you're under hypnosis about these people, I need to know sort of the important players in your life and maybe any important events in your life that are happening now or that have happened in the past. Um, then we will transition to um, going over those question, questions that you've brought in and I'll make sure that I'm 100% clear on what it is that I'm to ask the, um, the super conscious once you go under hypnosis. Um, because obviously at that point I cannot ask you for clarification. So I just want to be sure that I understand what it is that you're, you're looking to find out. Um, then we will transition into the, um, the hypnosis portion. And this can last up to two hours, um, as per the, you know, sort of official process as developed by Dolores Cannon, um, she highly recommended that no one be left under trance, under hypnosis, um, longer than two hours. So we will confine it to that. Um, so I'll guide you into this trance-like state, um, and this will put you in the theta brainwave state. And this is the deepest level of trance that you can get into. Um, and it, if you think about how you feel, um, just before you go to sleep each night and right after you wake up, um, 
you are typically going to be more um, open. Um, you might say things that, you know, are just sort of on your mind without that filter. Um, so this will be much like that. Um, and I will link a, um, a sample video or yeah, a sample video of, um, a recording of one of these in the, um, description so that you can kind of get an idea of what this sort of will be like. Um, so then we will bring you out of hypnosis and we will go over anything that you want to go over. Again, you are guiding this process truly. Um, and so, um, you know, some people have memory of the time that they were under hypnosis. Others do not. And so you may not have any questions at this point because you may not have memory of it. But then again, it's entirely possible that you will. Um, so if you don't have any, you know, particular memory of it, then um, it will be necessary for you to um, listen to the, the recording first. So let's talk about the two sections that take place during your time in hypnosis. Um, so the first part of your time during the tra in trance, um, you will examine any past lives that you may have lived that can lead you to some sort of deeper insight. Um, or as I mentioned before, this could be, you know, this could look like life in other dimensions. Um, you could examine, you know, parallel lives or perhaps your future life. Um, so again, just be allowing and understand that your super conscious will take you to the most appropriate time and place. So your goal here is to sort of, um, look at these lives, not just as like, oh, cool. I was a, you know, a, a queen in Egypt or something. Um, or whatever, um, but your goal is to truly look at these lives and understand what your um, what you are trying to be, what the lesson is that you were supposed to learn from each of your lives. Um, we will examine up to three lives, um, just because the process can get kind of bogged down if you try to do any more, and you really want to focus on um, you know just a a minimal amount um, so that you can really process that information. But you may not even have three. So it just depends on what your your super conscious wants to show you. So um, as we are looking at these things, I will supplement, I, I will ask you questions um, to sort of move you along through the process um, and guide you, move aside your ego, help you move aside your ego if that's needed. Um, whatever the case may be. So then the second part is going to be the super conscious access. So um, this is where I will be asking you those questions that you brought to the session. Um, and we will, I, I'll supplement those with my own questioning so that when you go back and listen to these, to the recording of your session, um, you can achieve the greatest degree of understanding. So, you know, that way, like if, if your super conscious says something, if you say something that is, um, unclear to me, or I don't think you're going to understand it, um, fully, I will ask for a clarification, um, until we, you know, are able to achieve a, a reasonable amount of understanding on that. All right. And so then after your session, I will send you an audio recording. Um, you should really, uh, it is highly recommended that you not listen to this while you're driving. Um, I would say the reason for that is twofold. Um, not only could you potentially go into a trance like state again, um, but moreover, um, it, it could be, you know, emotional listening to these things because it's going to bring up a lot of, you know, wounds potentially, um, that you'll need to work on healing, integrating and healing. And so I would not recommend listening to it while you are operating heavy machinery. Um, but when you get home, sort of take a little bit of time to, um, you know, eat, um, 
you know, maybe go outside for a little bit, enjoy, you know, some peace and quiet. And then at that point, once you have kind of cleared your mind again, um, you should listen to the recording. And then over the next few days, you want to listen to it again, at least a total of three times. And truly, um, each time that you listen to the recording, you're going to receive better insight um, and a sort of a deeper perspective on the things that your higher self has has shown to you and has told to you or your super conscious. Um, so, you know, I, I would say it's probably best to wait a day or two in between listening to each in between each listening um, because again, some of that, the information that you will get, um, it needs time to process in your mind. And then if you choose at a later time to come back for a follow-up session, um, that is called Beyond Quantum Hypnosis, BQH. Um, and this is a time where we can sort of like the first part of your session, um, your QHHT session, we can sit down and we can talk about how having this information, um, you know, affects your life now, how that has changed your perspective, because it will, um, and discuss any ways that you can talk about this to your family and friends. And I think that's key. Um, you know, it's, it's difficult to, um, you know, change your way of thinking on things and to sometimes let other people know that your way of thinking has changed because you've had this experience. And, um, you know, you can just send them the audio of your session and share that with them in that way. Um, but also it is probably, you know, it's probably best to really understand how you can talk to people about some things that may be potentially uncomfortable. Um, if you have had a past life with your spouse, um, or maybe, you know, another family member or friends, and you see now that some of the, the karma, um, things that have, uh, you know, sort of manifested in your current life and those things need healing. Um, you can sort of communicate that to them and, and you guys can talk about it. Um, and then also along with that hand in hand, you can understand how to best integrate those lessons that you learned on the day to day, you know, into who you are, um, at who everyone knows you as, as being, um, it's, it's a powerful process and, um, you will likely find out some things that you did not know about yourself. So, um, it, it can be paradigm shifting in a lot of ways. All right. So I just want to make one more quick note, um, for the end of this, um, I just want to say that it is not necessary. Number one, it's not necessary for you to subscribe to any sort of spiritual practice or certainly not a religion. Um, just come in with an open mind and in no way is this process, um, endorsing any sort of religion or spirit, particular spiritual process at all. So, um, just be, just be allowing, um, I, you know, it is not, um, specific to any particular ethos at all. And again, you are guiding the process. Um, and then secondly, um, understand that even if you don't have a belief in reincarnation, um, if you don't believe that you live past lives, um, if you don't believe that you'll have future lives or in other dimensions or any of that, that is perfectly fine. Um, you don't have to come in with any sort of, you know, preconceived notions about that at all. Um, but just allow, again, having an open mind, just allow for it because sometimes those, um, past lives that you see may simply be shown to you for the purpose of giving you, you know, that lesson. And that may be, um, you may not be able to identify whether it's a past life or a future life or a, you know, a, another dimension or whatever. Um, and so really that's immaterial, whether or not you believe in it, um, per se and reincarnation per se. 
Um, but for whatever reason, your super conscious, the deepest part of you believes these stories. And, um, because these are things that you are saying in the deepest state of, of trance. So you at your deepest core, even if you don't realize it now, you believe, um, these things that your super conscious is telling you. So, um, regardless of whether that, you know, looks like a past life or, or just, you know, a scene that you see that is intended to show you a deeper lesson. All right. So, um, I think that's going to be it. Um, again, I will include some sample sessions and then also some additional resources in the description box below.